Uh, welcome, my name is Peter Pappas. I'm uh, speaking to you here from the University of Portland where we are doing an introduction to iBooks author. Uh, just to give you a rough outline of how I'm going to handle this, I'm going to begin by um, kind of showing you what some of the built-in widgets are that uh, are part of the iBooks author suite. Uh, then I'll get into a couple of additional second party widgets that I find are kind of a lot of fun. And then the last thing I'll be doing is I'll be um, just doing a real quick demo of how easy it is to use iBooks Author. So with that, we'll get started. And uh, folks in the audience, if you have any questions or if there's something I need to clarify, be sure to let me do that. So what we're looking at now is uh, actually uh, just a page of an iBooks Author book. Uh, this is being uh, projected on my desktop. And one of the nice things about iBooks Author is it not only works on an iPad, but it works on any of the uh, uh, Mac desktops running one of the newer um, operating systems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through this, and I'm just scrolling across from page to page. Now, of course, you don't see my finger because I'm actually doing this on a mouse, and I'd like to show you what some of the various widgets are. Now, um, this is actually from a book that I've done called Getting Started with iBooks Author, which is available on iTunes for free, as well as all the other books. Um, and you'll see in the image here that um, we've got both the widget itself, which has got a gray surround to it, as well as I've included some of the settings that you'd want to use if you were actually going to create this widget. So I'm going to click over here, and you'll see that um, I have a series of Lewis Hine photos and I'm clicking down at the bottom and I can scroll through them this way. I can also just scroll with a, oops, excuse me, with a finger tap and I can enlarge it full screen. And if you look closely at this, you'll see that each one of these images has, uh, has its own um, uh, caption. And so this is kind of a nice tool if you'd like to uh, show off a series of images uh, I've also used this, I've converted PDFs to JPEGs, and in some of my books where I've had archival uh, printed material, I've allowed the viewer to kind of scroll through that way. So again, this is a nice tool. There's no limit to the number of uh, images in here. And I've actually seen people that have done, uh, in effect, comic books, where they have one screen and they use some comic book generator to... Um, in essence, move through it. I uh, mentioned that uh, you can take a, a PDF and uh, actually turn it into JPEGs, and then that could be part of a gallery widget. So this is something from my book called Recruiting Rosie, which is all about uh, convincing women to work in factories in World War II. And so what I've actually done is convert, converted a, uh, a PDF into a series. I love this one, Women Are Teaching. Oh who knew, right? Yeah, this is a this is a great book. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, it it will horrify women in the audience, right? Okay, so this was uh, again just showing how how to use the gallery widget uh, to convert a PDF. Uh, this is another example of a gallery widget. These are actually uh, World War II letters that were all done by a particular gentleman writing home to his wife from the Pacific Theater. So lots of ways. And you'll also see that the aspect ratio makes a difference. I'm on my iPad, excuse me, on my computer, so I'm pretty much giving you portrait, excuse me, a landscape screen. Um, so that gallery widget doesn't look quite so great in the portrait format, but if you bring it back into the uh, landscape, uh, content works great. Um, so that's called the gallery widget. Uh, the next widget is the audio widget, and with this uh, you can drop in an audio file in an M4A format, and uh, there's actually three different ways to display it. One down here in the lower right is a scrubber, and uh, so you'll see there's a little bar and I can move this along this way. And you can also uh, have it as an image like this. So a couple different ways to integrate an audio 
widget. Um, one of the things that I've done... <laughs> okay, let me scroll to the next page and that'll turn that off. Uh, one of the things that I've done in one of my uh, books on the um, on World War II and the home front is I've had the um, a gallery widget where the reader can scroll through FDR's personal draft of his uh, uh, December 7th speech. Uh, and at the same time, I've got a um, an audio widget of him actually delivering the speech to Congress. So. That means that the user can turn on the audio widget, start listening to FDR, read his speech, and at the same time they can thumb through a typewritten copy with his handwritten notes uh, going through them. Okay, so that's the second widget, that's the audio widget. Let's look at our third widget, which is a video widget. And this um, uses a file in an M4V format. And by the way, there are conversion tools, so if you have uh, video and audio files and other formats. It's very easy to convert them. And this will play right in this little box. And so this is a um, this is again from my World War II um, series on the home front. And I can also click here and enlarge this to full screen. Of and I can shrink that back down again. Okay, so this is a video widget. So this means that there's uh, two nice forms of multimedia, both audio and video, that can go into an iBook. Let's go to our next um, widget, which is actually a, um, a test question widget. And it comes in lots of different formats. Uh, you, can, uh, you can have like a multiple choice here, and you can check your answer. I guess that's not my favorite color. Let's see, try again. Try again. Is it blue? Check your answer. Oh, I got that right. And there are some other formats that I'll show you. Uh, we'll actually edit those in because those are find, found in another book. I uh, showed you one of the uh, forms of, uh, of questions that you can uh, include in an iBook, and this is with, with the question widget. And here's just, a, here's just another uh, kind of format. Um, this was based on some work I was doing at the Oregon Historical Society. Uh, and you'll see, you'll see this question here that says, which of the following best matches the type of covered wagon on display? And so in this particular case, the student could check this box, check their answer, it's wrong, so they could try again. And I think this is what they have on display, and I got that right. Um, this is... Um, this is a different type of question. Uh, in this particular case, the student, it, this is a um, item that was created by the local Native American tribes, and the student is asked about the, uh, how the artifact demonstrates the impact of Western life. And so, in a very, very simple example, they drag traditional weaving up to this part of the uh, image. They drag trade metal goods to this part of the image. They check their answers and they got them both correct. So you could have again additional uh, items, in, and there are other question formats as well. Um, there's something called a Keynote widget, which allows you. Uh, let me back up. Keynote is Apple's form of PowerPoint, which I think is actually much better than PowerPoint. And you can you can take any uh, Keynote video, excuse me, any Keynote presentation, and just drag the file into iBooks Office. And what's nice about that is you can create some hotspots uh, within a video, excuse me, within a keynote presentation to hyperlink the different slides. So you can make something that's very interactive. And um, in this case, this is just a, a simple series of, um, and let me enlarge this. This is just a simple series of um, um, graphs. I had to think of the word. Okay. Again, I'll cut in some examples of, of some other things. So that's the Keynote widget. Uh, the Keynote widget. Now, this is a uh, Keynote presentation that I've just created in Apple Keynote, and now I've dragged it into the iBook. And so you'll see that this is actually running on its own. And if you look carefully, you can see that the this is a series of keynote slides, so in effect, I've, I've created something like an animation, uh, though in fact, these are all 
um, just presentation slides that are that are running on a, a time center. So that's the keynote widget. Uh, the next widget is called an interactive image widget. And what that allows you to do is to drop in one image and then actually create some specific spots on that image which um, um, are tied to some text and a particular level of zoom and a particular um, location. So if I enlarge this, you'll see I have this historic photo and down across the bottom here, you'll see as I scroll through, you, you can actually highlight various aspects of the image. Uh, uh, here's a, another example of one of those. Um, I'm going to enlarge this and uh, we're going to click through the bottom here. This is a, um, something from World War II uh, convincing people to uh, donate to bond funds and in doing so um, collect the essentials for G.I. Joe. And so that's called the interactive image widget. And again, depending on um, if you have an image that has very high resolution, you can zoom in in great detail. And that's, uh, and that's kind of a fun tool. Another thing is uh, the 3D widget. So you can import a 3D file in and you can actually make it so that the user can control it. I'm controlling this with my mouse. Um, and there are libraries. Um, Google SketchUp Warehouse is filled with lots of libraries of existing 3D images. And you can also um, create your own using a number of other programs. So that's the 3D widget. Uh, something else is called a scrolling sidebar. And this allows you within a particular page to add additional text and or images to a page so that the user can stay on the page and continue to see some more content. So in this particular case, uh, I've got a couple of inventions from uh, this, a book I did on the, uh, on the industrialization. And these are a couple of Edison's inventions. So again, I can scroll up and down and that sort of allows the uh, user to um, uh, stay on the page. So in this particular case, there might be some additional content that you're going to offer them to look at. Here's a couple of examples of a scrolling text box. So you see in this particular case, I've got a map of the Oregon Trail, and I'd like the user to be able to continue to see that. But here's some additional content in two uh, scrolls. There's something called a pop-over widget, which uh, does pretty much what it sounds like. There's a kind of a hot spot here, and if I click on this, you'll see that in essence what I get is a, a scrolling widget, but it, but it has to be activated. And so you can, you can pop over images or words, and those will, those will come up for you. Here's another way to see that in action. What I've got here is a map of um, early territorial expansion, and I've actually created this uh, box around this location to uh, kind of highlight it, uh, and that's just a shape with a little drop shadow. But you'll see if I click on this, I can get additional information. So in this particular case, this is just used to draw the viewer's attention to that spot on the map. And again, this is the uh, popover widget. Okay. Uh, you know, we, I showed you video files, and um, a couple things to remember is you can, you can set them up so that they can run in a s relatively small area on the screen. Uh, for a year or two, I And in this particular case, um, I've used a popover widget and this icon, and the text of Mr. Sakamoto's interview is actually available right here. So what's really exciting about this is you could do things in different languages. I think this uh, does a lot for accessibility and so forth. I'm going to click off that. I'm going to stop his talk. The other thing is you can, you can actually have a video as a tiny icon uh, and this is just put 
over this larger photo. And so when I tap on this, it'll launch into full screen. So you've, so you've got a number of ways that you can display video and audio files. Um, you, question. Yeah. So for that last one, you just <clears throat> put an icon into the picture widget and then it was a, a link to a different asset? Um, actually, what this is, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, what, is, what is this uh, pop-up here? And this is just a different setting when you go to create, um, uh, excuse me, when you bring a video file in, you can say that you want it to either display in this manner, in which case I could drag and size that any way I want, or you can have it display as a tiny little icon. And I've actually added this kind of TV set thing, black border. Is that what they mean by like pop up over an image? Yeah, Okay. exactly. So uh, we've taken a look at the video image uh, widget. We've taken a look at the audio. And we've also taken a look at the uh, gallery image. And so here's how you can think about combining some of these things. This is a, a video of the bombing of Pearl Harbor from an old newsreel. And of course, I can make this full screen. But at the same time on this page, I also have uh, uh, FDR's Day of Infamy speech as a as a um, audio file. So if I click on this, it starts playing. And what's sort of nice about this is that I can I can have that audio continue to run for for the uh, viewer, and at the same time. I'm just going to knock the sound down a little bit. I've got this um, uh, hand, uh, excuse me, I, I have this typewritten uh, version of the speech with FDR's comments in it. So, um, so some in interesting ways to juxtapose different widgets. Um, you can also bring in animations of all sorts. Uh, this is uh, kind of a territorial expansion. 1803. 1804. And I don't know if it shows up well here, but you can see the various routes taken by explorers. And again, this is just... Uh, 1805. Another kind of content. 1806. Um, the other thing that, um, that I'd like to share with you, these are some second party widgets. And uh, one of the things that I like are image blends. Uh, there's many, many different types of widgets. Uh, these are some items that I included in a, a history of Portland's Japantown. So I'm going to open up this widget. Now by second party, this actually comes from a not from iBook Author, this comes from another company called Bookery, which allows you to create widgets at their website for free and then export the widget and then you drag the widget over into iBooks Author. So this is a, um, this is actually a photograph of contemporary Portland. This is on 2nd Avenue in a neighborhood that historically was Japantown. So this building still exists. This is a photo I've taken, but if I, um, grab my mouse here and I start to scrub over the image, I can actually reveal a historic image underneath the contemporary one. And um, basically what I had to do is I had to take the, find the historic image, go out and re-photograph it in exactly the same location. And I was looking for images where there were people prominently displayed. And, um, and the buildings, of course, were still standing and I could reveal the entire image and uh, I could hide it like this and I could try it again like this. So again, this is a, this is a second party widget and uh, there are numerous versions of those. Here's just a couple of other things that I've done using a couple of bookery images. 
this is uh, comparing some examples with a slider. So this is the same location, and I'm actually utilizing a slider across the bottom of the screen. And again, I tried to pick things that uh, that that had a certain amount of um, overlap and connection. Mm -hmm. This is another kind of a slider. This is uh, kind of a left-right slider. So this is uh, Skid Skidmore Fountain. And uh, you'll see that I've got a contemporary and historic image right in the same spot. Even managed to get the Max in there. Okay, versus the Hearthstone Trolley. Feel free to applaud at any point here. <laughs> um, and uh, here's another widget, kind of an inversion of the first one. Uh, in this one, the historic image is the starting point. And as I begin to paint this in, we can, uh, we can paint in modern Portland kind of growing. So again, these are, um, these are some additional widgets. It's my expectation that there's more and more widgets will be created all the time. A, uh, another feature of an iBook, this is actually not a widget, but it's, um, it's a tool that uh, is very easy to use as a glossary. So you can, uh, if I go over here and just highlight text, you'll see that there's a glossary. I'm going to highlight Portland, etc., Keller Auditorium, etc. So, so this is a nice tool. Um, okay, uh, let's uh, let's stop there, and we'll segue into our next phase. Okay.